into it. Do you think you'll be in a broom? You've seen and touched Andraste's ashes. They are the holiest thing on this earth. The remains of the Maker's Chosen. I do not know if I am worthy to look upon her. Yes, of course, but it still is something to be in awe of. What do you need? Ask away. Essentially, they're trained to fight. The Chantry would tell you that the Templars exist simply to defend. But don't let them fool you. They're an army. The other main purpose for a Templar is, of course, to hunt mages. To that end, we train in talents that drain mana and disrupt spells. Perhaps. But there usually isn't much of an opportunity. The Chantry keeps a close rein on its Templars. We are given lyrium to help develop our magical talents, you see. Which means we become addicted. And since the Chantry controls the lyrium trade with the dwarves, well, I'm sure you can put two and two together. Thankfully, no. You only start receiving Lyrium once you've taken your vows. You don't need Lyrium in order to learn the Templar talents. Lyrium just makes Templar's talents more effective. Or so I was told. Maybe it doesn't even do that. The Chantry usually doesn't let their Templars get away either, so they can spread their secrets. I'm a bit of an exception. Lucky me. I sent some dark spawn. All right. Yes. Now let's see. Our time award.
Did you hear? Andraste's ashes have been found here in Ferelden too. <sighs> Mother Volin said that's just some hoax. Mother Volin is a half-blind old cow. Everyone knows Andraste came from Ferelden. It makes sense they'd bring her ashes back here. <laughs> Those ashes are so old they'd be dust by now. I don't believe any of it. King Loghain will not... Vieta! This land is held in trust for the sovereign Dwarven kings. I cannot allow entry at this time. King Loghain demands the allegiance of the Desher, or Lords, or whatever you call them in your assembly. I am his appointed messenger. I don't care if you're the king's wiper. Orzammar will have none but its own until our throne is settled. Who doesn't? If I don't get in, no one should. Orzammar has no king. Endrin I do can return to the stone not three weeks ago, sick over the loss of his sons. The assembly has gone through a dozen votes without agreeing on a successor. If it is not settled soon, we risk a civil war. The Wardens killed King Caelan and nearly doomed Ferelden. They're sworn enemies of King Loghain. Well, that is the royal seal. That means only the Assembly is authorized to address it. Grey Warden, you may pass. You're letting in a traitor? And a foreigner? In the name of King Loghain, I demand that you execute this stain on the honor of Ferelden. You... you'll hear of this. King Loghain will see you quartered. You are free to enter Orzammar, Grey Warden. Though I don't know what help you will find. A trust follow, Warden. Those statues are dwarven paragons, if I remember right. Now the best that their ancestors have been done. If you were carved like Blanca, all Orzammar would be here. There are many great tales of lost kings who return to their lands. It is the Assembly who makes a king, and a king who nominates his successor. None of it is carried in the blood. Or, as now, when someone tries using the Assembly to pull a coup. Who's to say what my father said in his final hours, when the usurper Harrowmont was the only one by his side? I'll have you thrown in prison. You've bitten off more than you can chew! Handlers, separate these dashers in the Diamond Quarter. I will not have Balin incite a riot. Not speak that way about the man who should be king! Surfacer. I'm bid to let you walk the commons, but keep your place. Warden or not, I want order. Surface problems. Well, we have no king to hear you. You can join the shouting at the assembly in the Diamond Quarter if you want. Bunch of Desher lords bickering over sand. Balin, Harrowmont. Is one so different? No paragons here. They've caged themselves for fear of each other. As you've seen, keeping order down among us working people is dodgy. No place for a proper lord. Balin speaks through his second, Vartag Gavorn, in the assembly. Lord Harrowmont speaks through Doolin Ferender from his estate.
Yes, you should. What was that soup you made for supper last night? Oh, that? That's a traditional Ferelden lamb and pea stew. Do you like it? Oh, so it was lamb then. It had a certain texture I don't normally associate with lamb. Uh, excuse me, I, um, do you have a moment? You look like you're not from around here. I've been trying forever to find someone who really knows the surface world. I don't suppose you've heard of something called the Circle? I've been trying to reach someone there for years. I've sent missives with every caravan, but I never get a reply. I want to know if they would accept me for study. That would be wonderful. My name is Dagna, daughter of Janar of the Smithcast. Tell them I've already begun reading the Taventer Imperium's Verticum Kadab, and it's just fascinating. Did you know the Imperial Magister Lords once had genealogies of every human family known to produce a mage child? She's so enthusiastic and adorable. I'm glad we're helping her. <gasps> oh, I'll go pack my bags right now. I'll be waiting by my father's shop. of the hour. Is Lord Balin considering... I heard there was a Grey Warden here. I am Doolin Forender, second to Lord Harrowmont, King Endrin's own choice as successor. Word is spreading that the surface may suffer a blight. It is shameful we are not in a better position to help. That may be, and that is a terrible risk for the surface. But even if the world would end tomorrow, Lord Harrowmont cannot ignore Balin today. He cannot afford to trust anyone of unproven loyalties. That's a generous offer. If you mean it, you might attend the proving today. The Deshers take it very seriously. And unfortunately, Balin found some way to blackmail or intimidate House Harrowmont's best fighters into stepping down. It would certainly make your loyalties loud and clear. Balin would never work with anyone who humiliated him in that way. Aramont would have no fear of meeting with you then.
Excellent. The arena is located off the commons. Talk to the Proving Master and tell him you're entering Lord Harriman's roster. The key fighters we lost were Guidon and Beisel. You can look for them in the fighters' preparation chambers behind the ring. And be sure it's before the fights begin. After the first bout, no one may change the roster. If you need to find me again, I will wait in the Tapster's Tavern off the commons. There is no better place to hear gossip. Perhaps even word of your victory. You remind me of Lady Cecilia. Who? She was an all easy lady. My mother served her until she died. Look, I already told the Proving Master I withdrew. Do you have to keep harassing me? Nor I you, but it's pretty obvious who you're working for. So I take it you weren't sent here to find out if I withdrew from the Proving... In that case, never mind. Look, it's just, when I was younger, I had a thing with this Idukin girl, Revelka. Lesser cousin, nowhere near the throne. Her family wanted her marrying up, so they matched her with a BMO. But we didn't exactly stop seeing each other. Balin's fighter Miyaja showed me love letters they have, from Revelka to me. If I fight, they'll expose us. You do that? I don't know how to thank you. I. I know it's my own fault, but I'd have married her if I could. Balin's fighter, Miyaja, has the letters. If you make sure she never shows them to anyone, I'll fight for Harrimont again. But you need to find them quickly. Registrations close once the first bout starts. You new in the fights? I don't remember seeing you before. Was. Name's Guidon. I just tendered my resignation. Somehow I don't think the ancestors will favor me today. I bet he did. That man thinks nothing is beneath him. Well, you could just tell him I had my reasons. It's not so much what happened, as what's going to. I heard from a reliable source Lord Harriman's already given up the throne. Balin called this whole proving to let his lordship save face when he concedes. Oh? And where did you hear this that's more reliable than a member of the Assembly? Uh, 
I, uh, I suppose there's nothing his lordship would do without consulting Doolin. He's always been his top man. Maybe you're right. I I'm just a warrior. I've always tried to stay out of these noble politics. If I find out this whole thing was some flunky of Balin's lying to me for his own gain, I'll... I'll... Maybe I will at that. The proving will begin shortly. I'm sure you can find a place in the stands. Or were you here to take part in the fight? Well, that's a surprise. Never thought the Grey Wardens would take an interest in our king. Let me just put you into the schedule here. Now, is there a particular name you wish listed? We'll just call you Grey Warden, seeing as those human names are a real burr to pronounce. We actually have an opening in the first round. Are you ready to start? That's what I like to hear. I will warn you, though. This is your last chance to make preparations or meet the competition. Once the fights begin, there are no new additions to the roster. All withdrawals are treated as losses and a sign of the ancestors' disfavor. Do you want to start, or would you like some time? The fighters' quarters are behind the ring. Go down to the ring, then. I'll be right there. This is a glory proving, fought under the eyes of the Paragons of Orzammar to honor the memory of King Endrin. First up is Sawern of the Warrior Cast. Many of you remember when Sawern made history as a lad of twelve by defeating his own father in this very ring. Today, he fights as a champion for Prince Balan. Opposing him in Lord Heramot's name is a member of the famed Grey Wardens. In the name of House Aitu and our future King Balin. First warrior to fall is vanquished. Fight! was an exciting start, Warden. Sawern is rarely trounced, and so thoroughly. Are you ready for your next opponent? Next, you're up against Miyaja and Lukjan. As twins, they've always been allowed to fight as a single person. They're warrior cast, but their mother was a smith, so watch out for Miyaja's hammer. And don't forget Lukjan. Most fighters do, and end up with a knife in their spine. Are you ready to begin? All right then, I'll see you out there. This is a glory proving. Fought under the eyes of the Paragons of Orzammar to honor the memory of King Endrin. This round, Paramount's champion takes on the notorious duo. The warrior casts twin terrors now fighting for Prince Balin, Biaja, and Luke John. May the stone on you fall. First warrior to fall is vanquished. Fight! Time for more practice. And not all. 
Fighting bout. Two on one, and you took them both easily. Are you ready for your next opponent? Well, this bout should be quick and dirty. You'll be fighting Hanashan, one of the legendary Silent Sisters. She's a ferocious fighter and dedicated enough to cut out her own tongue. Are you ready to begin? All right, then. I'll see you out there. This is a glory proving, fought under the eyes of the Paragons of Orzammar to honor the memory of King Endrin. Paramount's champion has held the field so far, but how will he do against one of the legendary Silent Sisters? We'll find out as the Warden faces Lady Hanashan, who proves her worth to Paragon Ashtith the Grey by cutting out her own tongue. And to our Prince Balin by fighting in his name. First warrior to fall is vanquished. Fight! Simon's sister's support was a great boost for Balin. Are you ready for your next opponent? This should be a good match. You'll battle Wojak Ivo, master of all weapons, prisoner of none. He makes it a point never to use the same technique twice. Are you ready to begin? All right, then. I'll see you out there. This is a glory proving, fought under the eyes of the Paragons of Orzammar to honor the memory of King Endrin. This round is paired combat. Just as Kiatshet fought as King Bloodvik II defending our empire, so have dwarves always fought alongside a second. Master of all weapons, prisoner of none, Bojek Ivo has never won the same way twice. What will he do today, lords and ladies? And will it win the day for Prince Balin? Grey Warden, choose your second, for you face Bojack Ivo and Valans. Your trust humbles me. Last one standing will be declared victor! Fight! And I'm off. <laughs> <laughs>
Wojak Ivo is one of the best this arena has seen, Warden. Paramount picked wisely. Are you ready for your next opponent? This is the championship round. A full squad-on-squad -squad combat. Piot Naidukin leads the same team he's taken to victory in over a dozen Deep Roads expeditions. Are you ready to face the final test? May the ancestors choose wisely. This is a glory proving. Fought under the eyes of the Paragons of Orzammar to honor the memory of King Endrin. Only two warriors remain. Fighting for his royal cousin Balin, Piotan Idukin has led his team to triumph over every unit so far. Challenging him on behalf of Lord Harriman, the Grey Warden has risen from nothing to stand at the competition summit. Each will lead a full unit of four soldiers to see once and for all whom the ancestors favor. You fight for that which your judgment is questioned. The throne will never leave House I do. Last one standing will be declared victor! Fight! Ah, let's wipe them out quickly and not off. The winner is the Grey Warden! Congratulations! You defeated the man Prince Trian himself once called the Horns of My Army. Do you deny this Grey Warden has earned the championship? Then it is my honor to declare this Grey Warden champion of the Proving who has shown that the ancestors favor Lord Heramont. The ancestors speak through you. Congratulations, Warden. That was an excellent showing. We were honored by your participation, Warden. So, you know that I'm a Templar, right? I believe what I heard was that you were not, in fact, a Templar. You were trained as one before you became a Grey Warden. That's right. 
But I still have all the abilities of one, of course. That doesn't make you nervous. Should it? I am no apostate. Perhaps you should be directing this question at Morgan. She claims not to be afraid of me, or anything, really. But you've had more experience with the Templars than her. I know. Can you believe it? Algren's barely even warrior cast anymore, and he just clomps in here like he's entitled. I'm Loylanar Ivo, warrior, which is more than I can say for that useless sod. Well, he killed Lord Mino's youngest son in a duel to first blood. It was a huge scandal. Ogren should have been executed, but he'd won honors in the deep roads. Instead, they stripped him of all weapons and forbid him from engaging in fights within city limits. If he breaks the decree, he'll be exiled. <sighs> She's still his wife, isn't she? Even if she took their entire house into the deep roads and abandoned him. They were the highway system of our old empire. We lost them to the Darkspawn generations ago. No one ventures there now except on organized advances to clear Darkspawn nests, or with Bronca. If you see any guardsmen, tell them Ogren was at it again. News of the hour. Questions from... Allow me. I could do that for you. be under great strain. What do you need? If you're looking for Lord Doolin Forender, you'll find him at Tapstones, taking his evening drink.
ancestors carved my blood. What is that smell? I tried dwarven ale once. I thought it was just something they tricked surfaces into drinking. They're everywhere! I can't take it! Atrasvala, champion. I hear your performance in the proving was nothing short of amazing. I thank you for whatever you said to Guidon. He fought like a Beriskarn and showed many Deshers the strength of House Haramont's support. There can no longer be any doubt where your sympathies lie. If you're ready, Lord Haramont will see you now. His lordship is looking forward to meeting you. I appreciate what you have done, Odin, and I apologize for putting one of your rank through such trials. I am Lord Pyrell Harrowmont, and I thank you for your efforts to help me preserve King Indrin's throne. For us, the Darkspawn are a constant menace, so a blight may not elicit the same urgency you are used to. Ultimately, the Assembly decides what troops to send. If they no longer fear civil war, they'll have no reason to hold back. If you want my support to count, I will have to be king. And right now, there is no sure way to get there. Have you heard of a woman named Jarvia and the criminal Carter she runs? I'm glad you're so eager. If you help me shut her down, we can show the Assembly I am the right king to defend Orzammar. Jarvia hides her base in Dust Town, the raw edges of the city where no one lives but castless and criminals. If you would help me in this, it would show the Assembly that I, and not Balin, have the ability to defend and rule this city. Do this, and I promise if I take the throne, I will not stop until the Assembly sends your troops. Look for Javier in Dust Town. Do whatever it takes to see that justice is served. Harrowmont has suckered the wards. Balin will not allow it.
Let me guess. This is where the poor people live. you you don't look like any guardsman I ever saw and that's not much of a uniform oh you looking for a chance to bring in some coin could be I have that opportunity especially for someone with a few connections above ground uh, no offense but your kings have some laws that don't make sense in a practical kind of world. Like about who gets to buy and sell Lyrian, the sacred gift the stone provides us to show her love. No law should regulate that. The laws are meant to keep mages away from the stuff, so there's always buyers in the Circle Tower. I got one man, names Godwin. He's expecting a delivery of a stone's weight. You want an investment opportunity? Uh, I could see fit to, say, sell you that lyrium instead, at the reasonable price of 50 sovereigns. You can keep it, or, since you can travel freely from here, sell it to Godwin, who you know is buying. And uh, if you bring back his return order, I could pay you, uh, say, 20 sovereigns as a finder's fee. More so for someone like you, I guess. Most dwarves born down here have a natural immunity. Other races, there are problems if they spend too long with the ore. The real issue is that lyrium's valuable. It's only found down here, and human mages can't work without it. Long as you keep your eyes down and your mouth shut, we've got no further business.
Spare a coin? Two bits for the needy? Keep asking questions like that, and you'll get dragged in soon enough. Spare? H have you a coin to spare, my lord? It's for my son. He's sick. He hasn't any clean clothes to wear or anything to eat today. Neither have I. Thank you. That a stranger would care so much when my own family barred me from their halls unless I'm willing to... But no! I can't bear to even think of it! My son's father is castless, as is he. I used to be a miner, but my parents stripped my caste and refused to accept me back. Unless I agree to abandon the child in the deep roads and pretend I never bore him! Y you would do that? But why? Then I cannot offer enough gratitude. But I warn you, my father is a stiff-necked man. His name is Ordell, and he's usually at Tapster's in the evening. I do not think he will listen to you. But I will wait anxiously to see if you can do what you promise. Hey there, stranger. Six bits for a tumble. Two silvers if you all want to go at once. I... I weren't talking to you. Hear me? We weren't talking. Not often old Nadezda sees a fine-dressed stranger here in Dust Town. Help a poor cripple. What are you looking for? Know her. I used to run with her. Jarvia took over the carta not more than a year ago, and already she's got every duster with both legs bearing swords for her. Won't be easy. She's gotten real careful since Barat died. Real paranoid. She's got Carta members all carrying these finger bone tokens. She scratches some mark into them so she'll know they came from her. There's doors to her base all over the city, but only one is ever open at a time. And if you show up without a token, you'd never know it was there. Can't help you there, Salraka. The Carta members keep them real tight. But that's worth something, right? Maybe just a little. I'll think of you when I go to bed with a full stomach. Jarvie is a dangerous one. Le don't you go asking so many questions. Get you in trouble one day. I don't know anything. Leave me alone!
What are you looking at, stranger? I have no daughter. Could be you met a castless whore claiming she was once mine. What? You think she died just to keep that thing? She knows what she has to do to come home. I never wanted her gone. Just the little cur. Can't she see she'd have a better life if she got rid of it? Look, just tell her... We never meant to hurt her. It just seemed best that... Oh, just tell her to come home. Her mother and I are waiting for her. You're back. I thought you weren't coming. What did he say? Both of us? I don't believe he said that. I've never heard him refer to my son as anything but trash. He calls him it. But maybe. Maybe Mother convinced him. Or you did. Oh, my friend. I cannot thank you enough. If this were a story, my son would grow to manhood and pledge himself as a knight in your service. When he grows up, I will send him to you. I promise. Well, if it isn't my favorite overly tall but generous visitor, how can I be of assistance? You can't. Not unless you find one of those finger... Well, if you want in... Spare a coin? Two bits for the needy? What are you trying to do? Kill me? Spare a coin? Keep asking questions like that, and you'll get dragged in soon enough. That Jarvie is a dangerous one. I'm no one, no one, don't look at me. Hey there, stranger. Six bits for a tumble, two silvers if you all want to... It's everywhere. That's the problem. There's nowhere she can't see you. Well, look what we have here. Jarvia said you were looking for trouble. Congratulations. You found it. All right. <laughs> Don't kill me! Uh, Sonic ancestors! What do they teach you on the surface? Uh, you fight like a bleeding archdemon. Sweet bloody stone, look at them all! The base is below the city. You... Uh, you can get to it through the wall of the third house on this row. Put this token through the slot, and it'll open. Well, uh, will you let me go now? Really? Oh, thank you. You're a, a good person. How do they say it? The ancestors have shown their favor. 
bless you. What's the password? Looks like we have a martyr, boys. Time for more players. Time for more practice.
What's on your mind? No, you won't. You wonder sometimes, don't you? If your life would be better if you weren't who you are. When I was a young woman in the tower, I came to the realization that the circle would be my life, and I would know no other. Family, love, a simple life. These were things that others took for granted, that I would never have. It made me very moody. All I could think of was being trapped in that tower with no way out and no end in sight. I started hating my life and myself, and one night I found myself in the tower's chapel. I was seeking refuge, maybe answers. I must have looked tearful or made some noise because the revered mother came out and decided to speak to me. And because I had no one else to talk to, I talked to her. I must have said many silly things, but she told me that the Maker puts us all on our paths for a reason, and fighting our intended course is what causes so much anguish. Huh, I thought the old biddy was full of rubbish. I was 15 maybe 16, and I knew everything. So I left, but I always found my way back to that chapel. And as the years passed, I began to see the truth of her words. We were supposed to be polar opposites, mage and priest, but we weren't. There was much about us that was the same. The revered mother had lived in the Chantry all her life, as I had been in the tower for all of mine. She taught me that you can find your family in the people around you, that you can love your work and find fulfillment in duty. And there is joy even in self-sacrifice. If you put others before yourself, then their well-being is yours, and their happiness is your happiness. You can scream and cry and be angry about life as a Grey Warden, or you can accept it and allow yourself to see the good in it. This is your choice. Do something and quickly. All right. And
now. Wipe them out quickly. Ah! And I'm off. I have heard much about the halls of the Dwarven Kings, but the stories do it no justice. It is so strange, harsh, yet beautiful. And have you seen those tiny pig-like burrowing animals? They are adorable. I wish I could have one as a pet. But they must be hard to catch and... Oh, just ignore me. I'm so silly sometimes. Let's just go.
So, Harumat finally realized we're taking the city, yet he still can't be bothered to send his own men. Well, you pick the wrong side, stranger. It doesn't matter who's king, as long as there's a queen. You'll pay for their deaths a hundred times over. Kill them! But leave the mouthy one alive. I have plans for him. Time for more practice. <laughs> I could do that for you. What now? It's done. Success! All the beards of my ancestors. How did you? Where did you come from? <laughs> you made a hole in my wall. It, it does. Oh, sod it. If people find out about this, my business will be ruined. They'll think I have something to do with Jarvia. No! 
I don't have anything to do with them. They're criminals. When they built this part of the city, they must have built over some tunnels. I swear, I have no idea. Oh, just leave me alone. I don't want anything to do with this. And if anyone comes asking, I'm gonna tell them you did it. You again. Here to buy something, or were you just thinking of wrecking another part of my shop? I... Has she been bothering you? It's a whiff of surface stink, and she's like a cave tick. Won't let go. Oh, good. Well, let me know if she does trouble you any. Ah, oh, that girl. I've been telling her for years to give up those foolish notions. Magic's a human trick. If Dagna wants enchantment, I can apprentice her to a lyrium crafter. This is Dagna's dream, if it makes her happy. Do you even know what that means? If Dagna goes to the surface, she forfeits her caste. She'll never be able to marry or, or work in Orzammar again. Dwarves don't do magic. Dagna knows that. It's just the childhood fantasy that dies hard. Please, if you see her, send her back and let me talk some sense into her. You're back? But it takes two weeks and four days minimum to make the journey to the Circle Tower. I don't even know that. That's quite impressive. And just a little disturbing. Why do I get the feeling charting routes to the Circle Tower is one of her favorite hobbies? I'm guessing you haven't left yet. Lord Balin swears revenge on Grey War. I heard the news. Jarvia and her Carter are dead. I suppose it was unrealistic to expect them to surrender. Would that some of the noble guests had such loyalty. I have no desire to go back on my word. But when Balin heard the news about Jarvia, he raised the stakes. He is forcing a vote in the next two days. By law, that prevents the assembly from hearing any other pleas. To help with your troops, I will require your assistance one last time. Do you know anything of the Paragon Branca? Branca is a Paragon. 
The only one we have been blessed with in four generations. Two years ago, she took her entire house into the deep roads on a mad quest to uncover ancient secrets. No one's heard from her since. Were she to return and endorse someone for the throne, the assembly would be honor bound to accept her wishes. My men traced Branca's disappearance to an ancient crossroads known as Caradin's Cross. It is many miles below where we normally venture, but I can provide a map to lead you there. Just enter the deep roads through the mines. Thank you again, and may the ancestors guide your steps. What the butcher told me today, there's a grey warden loose. Now that we're back at the camp, I want to talk about what happened at Redcliffe. Yes, I know. I've had some time to think about it now. I just wanted to thank you. You went out of your way to save the Arles family and you did it. Even though it would have been easier not to. There's been so much death and destruction. It... well, it, it makes me feel good that at least we were able to save something. No matter how small, I owe the Earl that much. You're right. Hopefully by that time there's still enough of Reldon left to save. Good. Now that the warm, fuzzy part of the day is over with, we can get back to the ritual dismemberments. No way, it's not Tuesday, is it?
something I can help with? Yes? What's on your mind? Where did you hear this? And you believe everything you hear? <laughs> Not all minstrels are spies. Most are just singers and storytellers. But some of them are... are what we call bards. Bards are minstrels and more. Spies, as you say. Some say there is a bard order, but I don't think this is true. Many bards work alone or in small groups, doing the bidding of a patron who pays for their services. If there is an organization behind it all, no one knows who they are. Nobles, mostly. In Orlais, there is much rivalry amongst the highborn. They fight over land, influence, and the favor of the empress. But they cannot do this openly because it is impolite. And in public, they wear smiling faces and pretend to be civil. In secret, they plot and scheme to destroy each other. It is a game completely meaningless to anyone but its players. I have revealed too much, it seems. But it doesn't matter what I used to be. It is the past. I found myself in Ferelden and sheltered from bad weather in the Chantry. And when the storm passed, I just did not want to leave. I like to see the Maker brought me here. Something I can help with? Yes? What's on your mind? Of course I do. I love stories far too much to keep them to myself. Everyone should be able to benefit from them, I think. Chantry Law says it is man's pride that created the Darkspawn. In ages past, the mages of the Tevinder Imperium ruled much of the world we know. In their pride, they thought their magics invincible and imagined that they were greater than the Maker himself. So thinking, they invaded his golden city, planning to take it for themselves and depose their own creator. But they were impure and full of sin. And it is with the sin that they tainted the golden city, corrupting it forever. The Maker cursed them and cast them from his sight. Wherever they went, they spread the taint of their sin. Any land that was touched by the taint became blighted and would suffer no life. Instead, the darkspawn arose to torment us and remind us of our hubris. I know one, told to me by my mother a long time ago. It always chilled me to the bone. Maybe you have heard of Flemeth? Ferelden mothers scare their daughters with talk of Flemeth. They say that if you're bad, Flemeth will spirit you away and bind you to her forever. They also say that Flemeth mourns her lost beauty and will steal yours through your looking glass if she catches you. Flemeth's beauty was known throughout the land. She had hair like unto a moonless night, skin as pale as winter's first snow, and eyes as beautiful and perilous as the sea. When she came of age, she came to the attention of the Lord of Hyever, Conobar, and he took her for his wife. Conobar soon learned that his young bride had the gift of magic. He kept this a secret for he feared that she would be taken from him. Flemeth stayed with Conobar for some years, and with his blessing, she practiced her art. And then one day, a young poet named Osen came to the castle. Flemeth was captivated by Osen's voice, and he by her beauty, and they fell in love. 
Flemeth longed to be with her true love, and she and Osen fled from Conobar's lands, seeking refuge in the Kokari wilds with the Chasen tribes. They lived there happily for many a year, till the day Flemeth received news that Conobar was dying and longed to see her face one last time. Flemeth's heart swelled with pity for the man who once was her husband, and begged Osen to return to Conobar's side with her. But when Flemeth and Osen entered Hyeva, they were captured by Conobar's men, and Osen was slain in front of Flemeth's eyes. Flemeth was imprisoned in the highest tower of the castle, there to await Conobar's judgment on her. Distraught at the loss of her love, Flemeth plotted revenge against her husband. She summoned a fey demon, intending for it to wreak vengeance on Conobar. But a spell went awry. The demon possessed Flemeth. Turning her into an abomination, the halls of the castle ran red with blood as Flemeth slaughtered Conobar and all his men. The last of Flemeth's humanity melted away, and at dawn, she stole back to the wilds to plot and scheme for a hundred years. They say she took to her side many chastened men, and with their help, begat her daughter witches, who even now prowl the dark places of the Kokari wilds. Something I can help with? Yes? What's on your mind? I miss Valroyo. Unlike other cities where the people are the lifeblood and the character, Valroyo was her own person, and her people little more than decorations. There was always music in Valroyo, streaming from the many windows, quiet refrains and triumphant choruses, and always floating above that all, the chant coming from the Grand Cathedral. It was magnificent. Oh, it would take me a day or two to talk about the many splendors of Orlais, her golden fields, her lush meadows. Of course, there are good things and bad things about Orlais, like anywhere else. Sometimes I miss it dearly, and sometimes I'm glad I'm rid of it. And you will laugh at this, but I miss the fine things I had in Orle. I left behind much, leaving Orle. But there is more to life than dresses and furs. It is sad that many have lost sight of this. Orle is very fashionable. Almost ridiculously so. <gasps> But the shoes. Living with those ridiculous trends was worth it for the shoes. <laughs> well, yes, but that's not all they're for. If you saw a pretty lady in a beautiful dress, you'd want to see her dancing in her dainty shoes and not in, in huge boots. You? It's kind of you to say so, even wearing these mud-covered horrors. They're sturdy shoes, but sometimes a girl just wants to have pretty feet. Oh, I could talk about shoes all day, but we have things to do, don't we?